Hey everybody, it is me, it's Steve Simonson, and I'm back again with another Awesomers.com podcast episode. Now, this is episode number 172, so all you have to do is go to Awesomers.com slash 172 to see today's show notes and details. And today, really, I'm going to speculate about the status of the Canton Fair and whether or not it is, in fact, going to be canceled. Now, in the last 24 hours, as I record this here on, I believe it's February 4th, we've been getting messages and seeing messages circulated by both the Canton Fair organizers, where they are subtly hinting that, in fact, the, the fair may be closed or canceled uh, for this spring, and also from the, the Pazzo um, grounds where the Canton Fair is held. So on February 4th, um, United States time, uh, maybe late uh, February 4th or early February 5th China time, the uh, local radio station published a statement saying the Pazzo complex, which houses all the fairs and exhibitions in that uh, area, including the Canton Fair, have been postponed. All those fairs and uh, exhibitions have been postponed indefinitely. Now, they didn't specifically call out the Canton Fair, but the reality is with airlines like Delta and others, um, you know, many, many others, by the way, canceling all flights to the mainland China, uh, it's probably mainland China instead of the mainland China, uh, till the end of April, and this is in the end of January is when they made that announcement. All of this is in reaction to the coronavirus. So I want to talk uh, about a couple things today, and I'm just speculating. I'm sharing information, and I'm trying to um, add some perspective, I suppose, to this situation. I am not a fear monger. I'm not one who's panicked. In fact, I'm about to set sail uh, on an epic worldwide trip, uh, illustrating that I am, in fact, um, still prudent and, and still uh, capable of travel. I'm just not going to go into an area that has so many unknowns like China at this very moment. And this is in spite of the fact that I've been going to China for the better part of 18 or 19 years and have been there on the heels of SARS and have been in places you know on the heels of MERS and have been in places on the heels of Zika and in other turmoil type situations like protests, most things do not rattle me. And I'm not even saying I'm rattled today, but I'm aware, I'm acutely aware of the situation with the coronavirus. And I have warned now two weeks ago, or nearly two weeks ago, people not to go to the Canton Fair. And it looks like it may not even be a choice at this stage. So let's recap a couple things. Um, everybody's heard about the coronavirus by now. What does it mean in terms of impact to Amazon sellers, anybody who's an, an importer to their own country, an exporter from China? Well, at the minimum, it means chaos and disruption and uncertainty. That, that's for sure. Um, if you go to awesomers.com slash 170, I recorded a session just a few days ago with my, my leadership team, part of my leadership team in China, where they gave some of their perspective. And in fairness, and certainly on that, that recording, they're sharing their best available information. But please understand that all of their information emanates from China. So there's, as I said on the broadcast, in a nuanced way, there are two data sets. There's inside China data, there's outside China data. What we know from inside China data is they were slow to acknowledge that this was a, a potential problem. They, in fact, um, sent the cops after the people who were talking about this being SARS-like uh, early on. Now, they've backtracked on some of that. They've even issued, in some ways, really uh, unprecedented statements like, hey, we didn't get off to a great start on this coronavirus. The Politburo, uh, the Communist Party, issued those statements. So I think there's some acknowledgement that this is uh, a serious matter, and we don't yet know what the situation really is over there, except that it continues to escalate. Uh, I don't uh, relish this. I, I dislike this immensely. Uh, I, I was, somebody the other day said, oh, it looks like you're taking a great pleasure in this. Uh, and uh, that's, boy, the opposite of the truth. I'm uh, reacting, I think, as anybody would. On the human side, I'm very scared for my team and my staff in China. Uh, you know, there are many American companies who have pulled their staff out of China. Well, my people live in China. They're, they're local native Chinese people. And you can't pull them out. Um, and certainly in today's world, many countries are blocking the entry from anybody who's been to China in the last couple weeks. Uh, some of my uh, friends are in Vietnam, for example, and the local police actually 
scanned who's who's in town and had to scan all the foreigners passports to make sure that they hadn't been to China in the last couple of weeks to make sure that they were safe. So uh, the reason I mentioned some of these things, the fact that the Canton Fair appears that it will be canceled. And again, in the last 24 hours, there have been a lot of signals, both from the complex, the Canton Fairgrounds, known as the, the Pauzo complex, as well as the show organizers saying, again, they haven't said Canton Fair is not happening, don't bother planning for it, but they've done everything right up into the precipice of that. And so I don't expect that to continue. And by the way, since 1957, I don't believe that the Canton Fair has ever been interrupted, even including the SARS time where, although the visitor count went well uh, below its normal, maybe down by 100,000 foreigners, it still went on. The show went on. Uh, in this case, it does not appear that that's going to be the case. So if the Canton Fair is a no-go, first of all, I've, had, I've been contacted by a couple people who've heard my podcast and they're like, hey, I was planning on going. I don't want to go, but I paid for a trip with a, uh, an organized trip and they won't give me my money back. And um, th first of all, that's just, it's patently wrong for somebody to uh, take a firm stand and go, well, it's not cancelable you know, uh, whatever. Uh, I don't know what their, their positions really are, uh, to be honest. I haven't looked into it. But what I advise those folks to do is, uh, you know, go state your case. This is clearly a time where you should be entitled to your 100% full refund without reservation and without them holding your money for some undetermined time. Just get your money back. And if they won't, charge back your credit card, make a claim with PayPal or however you paid them. And if for whatever reason you paid by I don't know, um, bank wire or whatever, and they're just not cooperating, then contact me on Facebook or LinkedIn and I will uh, connect you with an attorney who is sure to uh, bring that to a quick and timely positive resolution for you. It's People need to do the right thing right now. And I don't expect that problem to last long, but uh, some operators of tours spend the money when they get it instead of waiting and, and keeping it in trust or in reserve. And so uh, that's not a great situation. It reminds me somewhat of the, the income store guy who's been accused of running a, a Ponzi scheme, right? It's all great. Everything's great until uh, somebody calls the, the numbers. And so let's hope that th those are fairly and timely resolved. But I'll say it again. After you try the chargebacks, if you need help, go ahead, find me on LinkedIn or Facebook, and I will connect you to lawyers who will help you settle that hash. All right, so let's assume Canton Fair is off the map. Uh, what does this mean? Now, for sure, it means uncertainty, as I've talked about, somewhat chaos, but it at least means delays. Now, we have a bunch of orders. We have a bunch of containers in various states of production, some that are already produced and ready to ship. Those will be the things that are the least likely to be impacted, right? As, as people come back to the factory and as people come back to the ports, uh, in spite of the fact that Chinese New Year has been extended, eventually this will come back. And we've been told, as of, again, in the last 48 hours, let's say, that the bosses will come back around February 10th and the workers will come back around February 15th. So, in theory, those products that are already through production and ready to ship should be ready to start getting going um, shortly thereafter. So, the net effect is you know, one to two weeks of delay on things that are already produced. Things that are already partially produced. So imagine when you get to Chinese New Year, at least in our case, we have long series of different purchase orders and different supply chain obligations. We, we don't just place a bunch of orders and they're all finished and then they all ship and then we randomly start placing orders again. It's always continuous. So there are a bunch of orders that are in uh, middle of production, basically, in various states. They could be, you know, think of it as a, you know, 25% done, 50% done, 75% done, and then obviously 100% done, which I just discussed, and they're ready to ship. Those orders in partial uh, shipment already probably have the raw materials on hand to complete the production. And maybe there, there are other small things that need to be done, but those in mid-production stage will are also likely to ship once the factory is back in production, expecting again two to four week delays on those in mid-production. Anything that's not produced 
that's where you're going to have some trouble. That's where, well, it's unpredictable because not only do you have the factory who's now reeling and trying to figure out, am I getting my workers back? How do I train these workers? You know, how many of them have uh, experience? Now they also have to make inquiries up the supply chain. Can I get this material? Can I get this, um, you know, whatever the raw materials that are required, are they going to be able to get that? Will the electricity be on during this time, right? Sometimes they do rationing of electricity. There's all kinds of variables and we just don't know the answer to that. And I wanna say again, that it's regionally going to probably be different. Obviously in the Hubei province where the Wuhan coronavirus emanated from, that's the, the center of the, the trouble circle, that's going to still be in lockdown for sure. Uh, and so they're not gonna start producing much. So there, there has been a semiconductor company in Wuhan that has continued production literally during this entire process 24 seven. Although they say by the end of this week, they may be running out of raw materials. And if the government doesn't let their convoys of raw materials in, they'll have to stop production as well. And by the way, this semiconductor company is um, obviously very, very important to many components that happen in lots of other uh, electronics. So uh, even though this may seem confusing and I'm, I'm, maybe I'm a little scattered even, I want to kind of reiterate, expect delays, expect variations in those delays. It's not like there's just one set delay and everybody goes, all right, everything's pushed back to, you know, two weeks. But I would say at least two to four week delays would be immediately applicable. And then potentially four to eight week delays on top of that, assuming things start to get better. And that's a huge assumption because the, the graph for the coronavirus just continues to go up based on our best available public information. And I put a big fat asterisk next to that because we don't know the information that, if, if that's comprehensive, that's complete, if it's accurate. And without, you know, casting shadows around, let's just say that the history of accurate information across so many different places is not precise and it's not good, uh, which leads us to believe that uh, maybe that it's worse than, than uh, we even know today. Now, I want to I wanna tackle the elephant in the room real quick because I keep seeing these messages from people I like and respect. And the message is, hey, um, why are we so whipped up into a lather? Uh, in the United States alone, you know, 10 to 30,000 people die every year from the flu with millions getting the flu and hundreds of thousands hospitalized and tens of thousands dying. So, you know, why are we all uh, getting our panties in a bunch over, you know, a few hundred people dying over this uh, coronavirus? And first of all, my first response is, okay, what do you suggest we do then? Ignore it? What, what, is, what does that mean? If, if the flu is the, the normal flu that happens every season, if that's more dangerous and a bigger killer, what do we do? Nothing, right? And, and then I flip that argument on its head and I say, why in the world, if this is not dangerous, if this is not somehow different than the normal flu, is China quarantining 60 million people? Why have they closed two Disneylands, Hong Kong Disney and Shanghai Disney? Why is the Great Wall closed? Why are 70,000 movie theaters in China closed? Why have airlines taken the unprecedented step to cease all flights to and from mainland China? You know, why did the uh, American Airlines Pilot Union sue to, to make American at least force their hand making the decision to stop flying to China? Why are the nurses and the hospital staff in Hong Kong on strike because Hong Kong won't close the mainland border completely. They've closed a couple uh, points, but not all of them. Uh, why are the Macau casinos closing? You know, there, there's so many questions of, if this is just a normal flu and, and not that big a deal, as all these kind of counter arguments would suggest, why in the world are these unprecedented things taking place? And I, I don't know the answer, uh, to be clear. But reading the tea leaves, when I see all the Starbucks shut down, all the Apple stores shut down, you know, all of these things happening that have never happened before, my attention's at red alert, right? I want to know what's up and I want to know what it means. Not just the human side, which is tragic and terrifying on some level, right? And particularly if you live in China, live in the Wuhan area, this novel coronavirus has no cure. 
right? Now people are recovering, but there's no virus there, or there's no uh, remedy that we can give. There's no vaccine that we can give as we sit here today. So that's, that's problematic. It's very, very contagious, um, much more contagious than SARS, although five times less of a death rate, assuming the data we're getting is accurate. And that's a big assumption, by the way. And I, I'm a little, you know, I hate to mention the, the, the Spanish flu of 1919 that wiped out, you know, millions of people because I'm, I'm again, I'm not a fear monger, but I think all of these steps that are being taken by the Chinese government, and I think many of their steps have been both necessary and draconian at the same time like quarantining 60 million people, right? That's unheard of. And if you see the pictures where they've bulldozed dirt to, to cut off all the entries and exits, and there's like town volunteers making sure people don't get in or out, um, these are necessary steps, I suppose, to, to you know, contain a situation. But they're also, you know, uh, <laughs> amazingly uh, unheard of. I, I don't know. It's, it's a little dystopian in, in some ways. So, my point is, if this is like the regular flu, why is all this happening? You know, hopefully it will solve itself and go away. Maybe the weather uh, gets a little better and, and the virus has a harder time surviving and maybe even a harder time uh, going from human to human. This is part of the problem. One of the other things I, I want to bring up is just because you've had the coronavirus, according to the, some of the Chinese authorities, you can have it, recover, and get it again. So this idea of just kind of a, a circle of this virus continuing is uh, catastrophic, uh, at least the, the implications. So what do we know today? We know that largely the virus maintains a circle inside of China. Yes, there are 20 plus other countries that have some isolated cases, literally you know, a dozen or, or slightly more cases is about the maximum outside of China. And I, I credit the international community, I credit China for that containment thus far, and I hope it stays that way. I don't know uh, the hum human side of this. I, you know, who knows where it will end, but I, I don't feel that this is just a, oh, it's like the normal flu or easier than the normal flu, so why, why worry about it? I think this is something serious. So my message today, please, you know, talk to your suppliers. They may not be talkative right now, they, Chinese New Year's been extended again, but I suppose in the next week or two, people are going to start working from home. They're going to be more responsive. And remember that if you read the, the book Poorly Made in China, that the natural response for a lot of these suppliers is, yes, we can. Um, you know, whatever you ask them, yes, we can, yes, we can, yes, we can. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be true. So you have to be very rigid about before you wire money, make sure that you have very clear deadlines for things. I would actually hold back money until you can look and see the production. Send somebody over. Uh, if you need help, go to simoglobal.com. Um, my team can refer somebody or, you know, uh, help you out if necessary during this tumultuous time. But get eyes on raw materials. Get eyes on production before you s send money. The problem with all of this is it, it's an extraordinary economic house of cards. Right? Think of the economic impact of closing all those movie theaters and canceling all these premieres. Think of the economic impact of um, you know, closing the Canton Fair or, or potentially it appears that it's completely canceled to me, but I'm reading tea leaves. But just imagine if that has happened. But the things that have happened, uh, Disneyland and on and on and on, they're, they're costing China billions and billions of dollars a day. There's going to be an economic fallout from this. Without question, the Chinese government's going to try to infuse capital and try to keep people going. But when you wire money, that money is a much higher risk today than it was a month or two or three ago uh, before the Chinese New Year. So I'm telling you, be prepared, be aware, don't panic, and let's make sure that we do whatever we got to do to help the people that we can help, um, make sure that we you know, try to maintain stock. This is a great time to consider uh, alternative uh, supply lines. Uh, there's the India trip with Megla. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, I would recommend uh, checking that out and seeing what that's all about. She is brilliant. Uh, the India trade fair, if you do any in homewares or any of the 
industries India is good at, this might be a good time to check it out. There's also a home fair in Vietnam in March that you could attend. There's lots of things to check out um, that are outside of China right now. So uh, anyway, I'm, I'm urging you to be safe, to think about your own you know, health and welfare and those around you. Because even if you get it, you don't know that you've got it for you know, between several days to up to two weeks. That means you can get everybody around you infected. And uh, that's, that's how these pandemics kind of transfers. Nobody knows what's up until it's too late. So I, I believe that the Canton Fair will, in fact, be canceled. I, EWU has been uh, extended delay. Maybe they'll continue to keep that closed for longer. Uh, but all of these are signs. And I want you guys to pay close attention to the signs. And I wish you the very best luck with your business. And I wish you know, China and all the coronavirus uh, folks uh, very fast and speedy recoveries as well. So... Thanks, everybody. I do uh, uh, hope that your business is strong, your health is strong, and we'll see you next time.